Hello and welcome to another Bedroom Guru. Um, it goes without saying that today I have to give a big shout out to all the Fibro Warriors and the ME Warriors because it's Fibromyalgia Awareness Day today and Chronic Pain Day. Um, I found a way to give myself a sense of worth and a sense of usefulness by doing these um, videos. Um, so anybody out there that's suffering, you need to have a positive mindset and find things you can do from your bed. Lots of people I know um, that have got MA have turned to doing things like craft and even making money doing that. Um, I'll just share your videos about how you're feeling and, and awareness about this condition. Um, I haven't been about for a while on YouTube because I've been in exceptional pain. Today I still am. But hey ho, goes with the condition, the beast that it is. Anyway... Shout out to the uh, Fibro Warriors and let's get on with what I want to talk about today. Today um, I've been inspired to do about how to tell that if you're psychic. The reason being I've had a number of um, emails concerning this and I always look at the most common thread or the most common question amongst the emails and messages I get and it seems to be this one. Because of the um, valve thinning since the 20, the twelve 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 transition um, that's now culminated to 2018. Um, as you, you may remember, you know, there was the Mayan calendar predicted it was the end of the world. It wasn't the end of the world. It was the end of a, a, um, a group consciousness. It The consciousness is now transformed to a higher vibration. And that means a lot more people are becoming more psychically aware and aware of the universal energies. Um, with that comes a lot of questions like, why am I dreaming about this? Why is this happening? So I thought I'd answer it for you. Um, the first thing we need to know is the difference between a medium and a psychic. A medium is someone, or it's, it's, actually it's best to do psychic the first, first way round because then it'll explain it better. A psychic is someone who has the ability to blend their energy with anything on the earth, like another soul or an animal or an object. Basically their intuition comes from the source of their soul, the source of their chakra points and gives them um, information about the, either the person sitting in front of them um, or they'll get intuition through reading cards or through psychometry which means connecting and getting energy off of objects. So basically their source of intuition and information is coming from them when they blend with people or situations in front of them. The medium is completely different. The source of the information is from a different um, ethereal plane. For instance, spirit person, angel realms, whatever's going on up there. Some people have um, channel aliens. Um, basically, the medium is a conduit, an open source, awaiting certain energy to come in, influence the senses, and then obviously bring the messages through. Not all psychics are mediums, however, many mediums are psychic, hence my title, Psychic Medium. I can do both. I can open up and get Fred to come through who wants to talk to his granddaughter, um, and then I'll look at the granddaughter and then start gaining energy from her. So I'm using my intuition on an earthbound level, as well as getting information from a different source. So I can do both. Um, and then obviously with that, you get upgrades and you get different things happen. So um, with me, I can see the future, the past, the present. I can scan people's bodies like my brother can and see what's going on and what's wrong. Um, so you get different upgrades as you go on or you're literally born being totally aware of all of it. Um, basically, how do you know that you're psychic? There's different ways that um, it will imprint on you, on this human experience. Some of you uh, may just have an intuition and people call you witchy and that's it and you just get on with your life and you're not really drawn to want to you know, develop it or go forward. Some people, life changes happen and suddenly everything becomes a lot more brighter and you start getting spooky things happen and you go on your path. Other people like me are born into it, a born ambassador that knows that their driving force in life is to bring awareness, knowledge and proof of the afterlife and heaven. And so I'm one of the ambassadors. So I'm fully aware of previous lives. I'm fully aware of um, all the different ethereal existences and they and all about heavenly areas, the astral planes, everything. So I'm very lucky that um, I've been born awake, if you like. That's, oh, that's quite a good way of saying it. And all my family have as well. So we've been born awake. So we're literally up and running before we even start. And we go back generations and generations of mediums before us. So there'll be a lot of people like that. You'll find that if you are born awake, then you will um, 
really, really fight not to have to use this because it'll be an itch you can't scratch. You just know that you've got to do something. But some people push it away. I did. You know, when I was in the police, I used it to do readings on people of a night and things like that. But I never thought I'd, it would be my full-time job. Um, it kind of is my full-time job now, even though I can't work. <laughs> but anyway, so there's all different ways of how um, psychic awareness affects you. I'm going to call it psychic. I would rather call it light worker how do you know you're a light worker how do you know if you've got a gift um but we'll call it psychic for you know generalization people know that word um to be honest with you the secret is everybody's psychic because we're all spirit people encased in a human body um we are basically coming down on a human experience and so we've all got the ability to develop and open our minds and energies up to all of the different planes um that are available we can all do it we can all do it some don't want to at all some have got it and totally ignore it um but if you want to work towards developing your gift then here's some there'll be some tips later on so how do we know that we're psychic? Let's look at the normal human stuff rather than the spooky dooky stuff. The first thing that you will feel um, if you've got a lighter energy or you've got this like psychic awareness around you is you feel like you've never fitted in in your life. You will always feel like, you know, lots of people report being bullied and things like that that didn't fit in and there was nothing wrong with you. You just did, couldn't fit into peer groups. Lots of people that um, obviously have psychic awareness like born awake, they um, tend to like the company of older people or even be in older relationships with people, you know, like their spouses and stuff are a lot older because their soul's older and it doesn't kind of connect with, with the age group that you're actually humanly growing into. So you aspire to be with people that have got more wisdom. And this also leads into alienation and you having issues around... Um, you know being amongst your peers you just feel like you don't belong anywhere and you keep trying to find different groups and different activities to try and feel a sense of belonging um, so basically that's one of them I'm going to warn you now right these are all the negative aspects of you knowing that you've got like big big awareness um, and they are hard but you can overcome them and you do overcome them once you open your path you know to um, meditation and, and linking in with the universe also, you'll find um, that you may not fit in your family peer either because you're an older soul and you've got a higher being going on there. Um, you might have picked to be in a difficult family environment, so you may have problems with your family, siblings, all that kind of thing, um, because you've chosen a bit of a challenge. Most people should be protected and loved, um, but you choose not to be before you come down here. So there could be issues of abuse um, and issues of... Um, not having a proper family unit that's another one um also because you've got this high vibration that your body's like oh my god what have i picked to come down here again for you're trying to match that all the time so lots of people get problems with serotonin because your soul is almost homesick and totally aware of what's up there your body goes into like a depressive type of energy. So lots and lots of mediums I know from my experience and from my own personal experience as well as meeting thousands of mediums and light workers in my life is depression. Lots of people suffer with depression. And it's almost like you're battling with your high vibration inside with this physical body. So you get physical body problems like joint problems, lots of so many of my light worker friends have got MA, it's ridiculous. And so I just think that it's a bit like oil and water. I think our high vibration souls just don't like being in this heavy human um, body. And it just doesn't mix very well. It's really, really difficult. So lots of them will get weight problems um, because they're trying to ground themselves because they're so high inside with their vibration they try and ground themselves and also protect themselves from other people's energy so people do have weight problems or quite big um also you will also either be surrounded by um or have experiences of regularly being in contact with people with addictions or you'll have an addiction yourself um again it's trying to find that high it's trying to find that that same level of um height that your soul feels and you're trying to get to that level, you most people have got no idea you're doing it. So don't blame yourself. You've got no idea you're doing it and you just want to 
have that buzz. You want to feel the buzz of what it's like to be in the spirit world back in heaven again. And down here, you don't get it. It's not even close. So you try and find things to make you feel more heightened. Um, you could be quite extrovert. There's two ways of doing it. You're either really extrovert and nobody actually knows what's going on inside, which was my choice. Well, not my choice, but that's how it worked out. Or you could be really introverted and just love your own company because you don't really like human contact. Um, so it's quite a difficult thing to get your head around. But once you get into like a circle, development circle, or a spiritualist centre, or you start meeting like-minded people, you'll totally understand yourself and you'll know exactly what it's all been about. It's really weird how it happens. Um, you know, we normally have food intolerances as well because our spirit bo spirit's going, oh my God, what's this crap we're putting in here? We don't like this heavy stuff. We want to go back up there. So, you know, food issues, food um, addictions, bad emotions surrounding food, all that kind of thing obviously will take place so it's not it's not the greatest beginning i'm not gonna lie but that's part of what happens you know you'll also get really weird mood swings where you'll suddenly feel so down and you have got no clue why and then you'll find out perhaps you know bombs gone off in syria or something and what happens is, is you sometimes will be aligned to the universal energy. So sometimes you can feel really high and happy because something great's happened or really low. And so that that's all to do with you connecting with the universal energies and vibrations. It's like night before last, I dreamt of the most horrendous floodings with buildings falling. God knows what in Spain. Hope it's a dream, but we'll see what happens, you know. But it was just like, God, it was really bad. Um, also, we'll come on to dreams in a minute, um, but also... With the um, other feelings that you'll get, it's obviously a, a feeling of, um, oh God, I've started thinking of other things now and I've lost my bloody train of thought. Is this a bloody brain fog? Does your head in? Oh, come on, come back to me, come back to me. Yes. Also, you'll find that you're very sensitive um, to people and you'll be very sensitive to um, anything that hurts humankind um, you know, vulnerable children, animals. So you could be a bit of a crier. And the more that you develop or the more that you're being pushed towards doing this sort of work, you'll find that you just laugh with tears, cry with tears. You're just totally sensitive to everything because all of your body's getting more sensitive. And with that, you know, you become sensitive to foods and drinks and things like that. So you're ultra sensitive to people and situations. Normally, the career that a light worker will take on is something like nurse, hairdresser, police, um, any care involved environment or something where you're making a change, army. It's all to do with community. It's all for you obviously wanting to get out there and try and shape humanity or look after them. Hairdressers, there's so many hairdressers I know, I can feel their energy and think, oh my God, you're so psychic. Um, and so you have to be aware of like maintaining your energy because... The other th thing is as well is, is like you'll walk past someone and think, and they're pregnant, you think, boy, straight away, you'll just know it is, right? And you'll feel people, and if they're down, you'll feel down. If they're high and happy, you'll be like, wow, I feel really good. Um, So you are very, very prone to feeling the energies of people around you. So that's got to be something you've got to be mindful of. But again, I'll give you tips about that most probably in another video. In the next video, I'll give you tips on how to start your psychic path, if you like. Um. As I say, it could be just little things and you're really not fussed, but some people who are being chosen to be a light worker, you will be getting this 24-7 thinking, what the hell's going on? So be aware that um, if you're being chosen, you ain't got much choice, trust me. Um, I was just talking about dreams earlier, um, about Spain. Most psychic people will have the most clearest lucid dreams ever. And normally what it is, my friend Nikki gets them all the time and they're so amazing. It's she just connects with my soul. She sees things that are happening. It, they're just, she's just amazing with it. The reason why is because they want her to work. They want her to, to, to like use her gift to help people. But she's not doing it at the moment until um, I get there and grab older and start tr like helping her properly. But what they're doing is your alpha brainwave state that you actually go into to, to link up or do your work as a, as a psychic person 
um, that's the same as sleep state. And so if they can't get you in awake time, when you're like, no, 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 I don't want to do this consciously, they come into your sleep state. So you could get visitations from your loved ones, you could, you could get messages, you could dream about something and then it happens the following day and you're totally freaked out and you don't know why. It's because you're basically um, having your psychic ability used during sleep state because you're refusing it during the day or you don't know how to use it or develop it. And so, you know, you'll get these really amazing dreams and you'll remember them. So many people go, I don't remember my dreams. You do have dreams, but with us, because we have clairvoyance, we can see in our mind's eye and remember every single detail and feeling about that dream. So if you're having those sort of dreams, you could be like a, a light worker. Also, um, don't forget that when you've got people coming down, if it's totally random, um, you've got spirit people coming down, it's totally random, and you're like, that's a bit weird, perhaps it may be just a dream, but if they're actually talking to you and telling you things, take it on board. You need a notebook or a pad next to your bed to make notes of the dreams because sometimes they're coming down to actually bring you messages. And because you're not obviously um, working it out during the day, they're like dr driving it home in dream state. You'll also um, have a feeling of knowing what people are going to say. So you'll stand there and think, oh my God, I so knew they were just about to say that. Right, or the phone goes and you'll know exactly who it is before you've even looked on the caller ID. And some people they say, Oh, it's just their it's just their ring. Right, and it's not just their ring, you just know because you're connected. It's the same as if you're sitting at home and you live like with a big family, you'll know who's walked through the door because you'll sense their energy. Your senses will be so heightened that you'll know who's walking in, but you'll just think that's normal intuition and ism. Um, it's a really remarkable thing actually because you could be really nosy it's really good because you'll know if people like you or not because they'll go hi and you look at them and think oh you don't like me very much it's really good and again people just take that as a nat you know, natural hunch or just instinct it's not it's the fact that you're actually your soul is having a nose around and thinking oh I'm having a look at that soul and this is what I think of them you know so be aware of that and obviously the other thing is as well is that you'll go to places and get deja vu like you've been there before that's them imprinting on you, either memories from a, a previous life. Um, can be deja, deja vu scientific, but I don't really go along with that because mine have always been proven by me going up to meditation. Go, oh, yeah, you used to be there, you used to do this, or you know exactly where you're going. Like I did in that, you know, the past video I told you about with the Vatican. I know exactly where I was going. I marched straight across, and that place is vast, And but I know um, that um, I had to go down to that crypt to find Pope Nicholas V. Um, so you'll get that sense of deja vu a lot and that's basically your life plan playing itself out and you remember planning that when you was up there before you come here and that's what that sense of, hang on a minute, this is all completely, I've seen this all before, it's because you planned it, that's why, um, that's why and it just shows you you're on the right path. Also, when you're being called to arms as such, um, you will see a lot of numerology. Numbers are very important in the matrix of um, our existence. And numerology is absolutely a massive thing. I don't want to go too deep in it, so I don't want you to get confused. Um, but normally, lots of people will see 1111, spiritual awakening. You're being asked or being shown it's, that it will be good for you to open up. Now, I don't mean, right, if you're if you're getting all of these signs, it doesn't mean you've got to become a medium or a healer or a psychic. It basically is the angel realms or the spirit world, the universe, the, your spirit guide, your guardian angel, basically saying, look, your life could be a lot happier, could be a lot more content if you open your energies up and just listen to us because we're trying to help you here. You know, you don't have to be like me. You just have to, by living a spiritual life, this is what these videos have all been about. It's just like living happier, calmer, peaceful, spreading the love that we need to do in this energy, in this universe, and saying, okay, yeah, thank you very much to the people that are just horrible, you know? Because you've got to remember as well, is that a lot of people that are light workers, psychically aware, they don't really like humans very much. They They tend to be more connected with animals and babies and young children and the planet and it really upsets you to see bad things happen to the planet or to animals you know it really really upsets you don't just look and think oh that's horrible it absolutely rips your heart out i can't watch anything you know these bloody things come up on facebook you know and twitter and that where you see abused animals oh my god it's like i've just my you know like my animals just been killed i just can't stand it i love animals more and i have always had the fantasy since i was a kid 
over the line the witch in the wardrobe oh my god as learn run the country run the world love it love it um saying i don't like humans i do but, I, but the humans i'm talking about is like you know the power the the people with the power the wars the abusers the people that want to kill i just think oh i just don't want to have any connection with them at all i just don't even want to connect with it i just don't like it so for me my my absolute um utopia is nature being around animals watching animal things on the telly just being away from humans now and then just to take a breather from it all because it's too overwhelming um and so isolation in nature for me is just absolutely lovely that's why i desperately miss diving so much and i so so want to dive um to be back in that bubble of just nature water obviously the conduit of the spirit world amongst the fish and the animal life there and the sea life i will get back there one day i will um but you know we don't really like the human world very much we're not too impressed with it we're not impressed with material stuff either we'd rather have love and um abundance around us that way rather than worry about money so these people you know when you see these people on like um the apprentice and go oh yeah i've made a million but i want to make 10 you're like oh my god you're such a young soul you've got no clue you know all they care about is power and money and it just makes me feel ill watching it it fascinates me that these people are driven because they want to be powerful and have loads of money oh it's sickening so basically um they're young souls they've got no um heightened energy in them. and that's why they're always young fit and go and do what they need to do but as they they progress and come down here they'll start realizing the value of other things in their human experience apart from the material stuff i'll tell you that now so yeah look out for numerology 11 11 obviously spiritual awakening you might keep seeing that um you might but it could be any numbers three 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 it could be anything at all that you keep seeing um that they're saying we're we're trying to wake you up here you know you need to listen to us so you know get on with it try and um <clears throat> try and basically you know get on the path because we're here to help you you might also um feel like no matter what you do it could be a job it could be having a family it could be moving to the place you always want to live you still feel there's an itch you can't scratch and you just don't get it and you just think why do i feel like this i just can't understand it and basically that again is to do with the fact that you haven't opened your energies up to spiritual awareness and that you're being bugged about it come on do it do it do it and that's why you feel a sense of unsettlement because you just feel like I'm happy, but I'm not quite happy and I don't know why. And it may be because of that, you know, don't, you know, if there's just one of these things that you, you recognize in this, don't think, yay, OK. And by all means, anybody can develop, anybody can get on a spiritual path. All I'm saying is these for the more heightened individuals who think oh, I'm so psychic, I don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, so normally most of you who, who are listening to this thinking oh my god you're talking about me you're the ones that need to really have a look at yourselves and see um how you can improve your development or how you can get on a spiritual path because believe me it will change your life you know also you will also um normally have an affinity to otherworldly things around your house giving you visual reminders of heaven or the angel realms uh, i i do you know what my beautiful little niece jess and tyler my nephew came around i said right count the fairies they gave up in the end i've got so many fairies and angels and buddhas in this house it's ridiculous and um, they're everywhere everywhere i look there's wings absolutely everywhere butterflies dragonflies buddhas fairies angels everywhere i look throughout my house it's there okay um so generally you'll like to have visual reminders of um a different universe if you like a different a, another worldly or unicorns you know anything that people say don't exist you will have them as reminders that these sort of energies do exist in another dimension um and you you just need to be reminded of that you know butterflies for transition dragonflies to remind you of the um that you know this world is just an illusion the reality is us as spirit people up in the spirit world um, and you'll just have those sort of things all around you. I'm just, I've given up counting. I'm looking everywhere. There's just angel wings and God knows what everywhere. Um, so they're the sort of things that are going to be around you. Um, it is tough to um, come to the conclusion. You know, I remember 
when I was on Culloden Moor, which was one of the most amazing places I used to take my students to when I did a Scottish retreat. And I remember saying to this girl, I've been waiting, Kate, bless her heart, I've been waiting all of the time that we were there to tell her, and I thought she's going to think I'm a nutter. And then I stood there and said, you really need to talk about your reality, you really need to acknowledge who you are, because you know that you used to be a fairy. And she started crying, and I thought, thank God for that, I think I'm a nutter. And I know this to people is going to sound really weird, but there's different soul groups, different experiences we have in different life paths, and we should be very um, ignorant to think that we haven't had different types of forms, like fairies, you know, I, I totally believe, you know, I've seen them twice, I wish I'd seen them more, and I was very, very, very sceptic, but um, all the other explanations are out the window, um, and we have had different soul group um, incarnations, you know, different planets, different forms, and so she'd remembered this past life, and now she is totally open about having a fairy um existence it goes to the fairy balls and wears fairy wings and she's a very 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 gifted healer um uh, with crystals and she's totally aware of universal energies but she's found her space and she's absolutely flourishing before she felt so lost hope you don't mind me talking about you Kay. um she felt so lost and so in the wilderness and didn't know what the hell was going on and now she's absolutely spiritual guru number one it's just amazing to see people blossom from this feeling of who am i what am i why do i feel these things um also you be aware of the senses that take place um when you are not really knowing what's going on obviously clairvoyance um which is obviously french i think it's french clear seeing clairvoyance so um clairvoyance is basically um it's for instance say if you're just standing in front of someone and they're just chatting about normal stuff and suddenly you start seeing flashes in your head and I think, what the hell's going on here? And it's not your fault. And then you say to them, oh, this is really weird. They go, oh my God, that just happens. Right, so clairvoyance is seeing things pictured in your mind. So if you, for instance, picture Elvis in your mind right now, right, imagine that really strong, really vibrant and almost present, like you've got something just walked in your head with that look of Elvis. That's what it's like, clairvoyance. Um, it's very different from physically seeing spirit. Um, I work a lot more in here in my mind's eye, but sometimes, well, I asked Catherine, my um, prophecy guide, my psychic guide, I said to her, I want to start seeing him. And she went, all right, then. And then the next time I did a reading, this bloke's head come out the wall. So I, I'm very lucky that I can see both. Um, you may see them as shadows, sparkling lights, whatever it may be. And we've already done about spirit manifestation. Um, but sometimes it'll be in your mind's eye and sometimes it'll be physically, you know. Unfortunately, there's lots of mediums out there that make it like they're just standing in front of someone that's solid all the time, you know, 24-7. I don't think so. Um, you'll be knackered by manifesting that energy next year. Anyway, um, so not most of it is mind's eye, you know. You can physically see things without a doubt. You can physically see your granddad standing there in your bedroom. Um, but most of it is normally through your mind's eye, you know, what you see in your mind. Um, you've also got um, smelling, so you could be aware of smelling weird things like your dad's cigarettes or your mum's perfume that passed over, and that's clear salient, so you can smell things that they bring you, so you may have that. You can also have clear gustance, which is being able to taste things, which I've got, I've got all of them, which I'm so lucky, because I've got every single thing that anybody could aspire to want as a medium, a psychic medium. And you can taste things. And you'll be like, does your mum like pear drops? Like, yeah. And, you know, you can taste stuff. It's really amazing. Um, also, clear audience, you can hear things. Again, you can either physically hear your name being called. Lots of people that are psychically aware will hear their name being called. You know, sometimes it's more clearer when you're in the shower, like I've mentioned before, because you're, you're literally, the water is the um, conduit to spiritual activity. So if you're in the bath, you might hear your name go, yeah. And they go, oh, I didn't say anything. And like, yeah, you just called my name. They may try and talk to you. You might hear angel realms, which is a loud buzzing in your ear. You may even hear, it's like, for instance, I did a reading the other day. And I said to, um, oh, she's so lovely, bless her heart. Um, I said, oh, your mum is telling me that when she's next to you, your ear will go deaf. She went, oh, my God, my ear just turns off. It goes deaf. I said, that's her energy. So be aware that you can, you know, list concentrate listen what you actually listen to is it something explainable or not okay 
The other thing is clairsentient, which is just you basically feel, you feel something and it could be a touch, you could feel goosebumps, you could feel your scalp um, tingling, you just suddenly feel that you've got to say something or you feel something that's got nothing to do with what your thought process was before. So you're just literally going by your feelings. I feel bad around you. Why do I feel bad around you? Oh my God, don't. My boyfriend's just left me. I feel really happy. I feel excited. Yeah, I'm pregnant. You know, you'll, you'll feel those things and they'll imprint from other souls to you. Um, so be aware of that because you start marking it. Start being aware of it. Um, also, you've then got clear cognance, which is you just absolutely know, 100%, something will bang into your head and you'll go, I know that you've got this. I know that you're going on holiday next week. I know that your dad's poorly. I know, and you just absolutely know. That, to me, is huge in my um, way of working. I just absolutely know, 100%, and I'll see something in my head using clairvoyance, and then I absolutely know what it is and go, right, blah, blah, blah. And they go, how did you know that? I don't know. It just pops in there. It just pops in there. Do you know, I once, when I was filming for Angels, right, in, um, where were we? I think it's Manchester. Um, I was in a hotel for the night after we'd stopped filming. And I thought I'd go down to the bar and there was a quiz on, right? And I think because during the day I was like open the whole time. I was doing um, Street Angel on the second series, right, where we were just going around the country doing angel readings right and I went into the bar and I must have been still a bit open and they were asking these questions and it was only me you can imagine what right, all these groups you know all the dedicated hardcore groups are going for a pop um, for a pub quiz and so I started I thought I might have a little go because you know all the rest of the crew have gone gone out like out for the night and I didn't really want to go out drinking and that so I thought now I was staying because I did a long day the following day and it was so funny because I just remember, I just knew the answer. And I didn't have a clue. I, I just knew it. And I kept writing them all down. And in the end, right, I had, I was joint first with this, like, real geeky circle of people. I was like, oh, my God. Because I just knew the answers. And I knew I was, I was cheating, really, because I knew someone was sitting there telling me the answers. Stuff that I've got no clue of. Absolutely not. Not even inkling, but I just knew it. And then um, we got to the tiebreaker, but it was, a, I'll guess, how many um, people here. I was saying totally random, and I, I missed out on that, and they won it, these geek people. But it was just so funny. I just knew all the answers, and I knew it was clear cognizance. I knew someone was just banging the information in for me to say it. It was so funny. In fact, I did cheat once, and I did do that at another pub quiz, and we won it. Yeah, that was when I was in... Um, Thundersley in Essex I just knew the answers then as well it's really weird I shouldn't say that because if I get through to like who wants to be a millionaire or something they might not let me go on it <laughs> anyway so there are all your senses that you can use and be aware of you've got to remember that your body when you're psychically aware it becomes a sponge and it absorbs everything around it and so there's ways of maintaining um, your soul and maintaining your body so you don't get too badly affected by this um, by all means, you know I do the Prism Living course, which obviously helps you. It's got all of the tips and ways to help you get on that path of spiritual development or even just spiritual living so you can live happier. Um, but my next video, I will be doing how to look after yourself and how to start your path to understanding. Um, so I hope this has helped you. Please share this to other people. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe so I know how many people are watching. Um, but for the time being, I'll leave it there because I don't want to go on and on and on so you get really bored. Um, but have a look and see if any of these attributes I've just mentioned connect with you. Um, and if they do, then yeah, you are, you're, you're more psychically aware than most people and have got the ability to like develop very quickly and start living a spiritually aware life. So um, I hope that helps. Next time we will be talking about how to look after yourself how to maintain that soul and how to clear yourself of other people's energies. I really hope you've enjoyed this video um, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Take care and have a good weekend. Bye now.